Morning, Bill. Morning, Sil. How are you both? Morning. We're all good, thank you. Oh, we need a bit more of a positive intro than that, Bill. Come on, wake up. No, I'm, I'm wide awake, Luke. I'm wide awake. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. Now, Bill, you were in flying form at Royal Ascot, uh, but that's gone. So we're not going to give you any credit for that now. It's, tomorrow is what, what counts. And what a weekend of racing. We have a veritable feast of action. I mean, the Derby and the Oaks have never been run on the same day in 200-year history, I wouldn't have thought. And if that's not good enough, we've got the Eclipse on the Sunday as well. So I don't think we could think of a more exciting weekend racing. Yeah, brilliant weekends racing. And, and don't forget the French action on Sunday as well. You've got the French Derby and Oaks as well. So, so the action's thick and fast. Well, let's hope we can all keep up. Now, I'll very quickly, because you're bored of hearing from me, but I will run you through a few things we've got at Star Sports over the weekend. Look, whether you're betting fivers or five grams or whatever it is, there's all sorts for you at the website. So get yourself there. We're running the Picked, which has been really popular at Royal Ascot. If you beat neck or less uh, on an ITV race, we'll refund you up to 100 quid. So it's not a tenner like all the other firms, it's 100 quid. A lot of people have been calling us up and saying that other firms have closed their telephone account. If you want to bet over the phone, please do. 08000 521 321. And if you're an owner, those limits are there. Again, if you own a horse, you can back any horse in the morning to win 10 grand. But like we always say, whatever you bet in, 50p or five or five grand, we're here for you. And Sylv, now it's your turn. You've got to find them the winners. And we go to the Ascot, sorry, Ascot, Epsom, the 225, the Surrey Stakes. You ride shine so bright. Four to one second favourite. Um, didn't really go its way in the Diamond Jubilee, but... That was a tough ask. A drop back in trip, a drop in class. Should have every chance, I thought. He, sh he should, yeah. He, you know, don't forget, this horse has has come off a long way off, you know. his uh, was his first run for the year. And, uh, you know, usually Andrew's horse take one run to get ready. And uh, was a big ask in the big day. And uh, the ground was against to him as well. So, but he's, uh, I think if we get the ground Saturday, you know, he's a, He's a top the ground horse and he should be competitive. And uh, we've got John Queen's horse, the favourite, safety voyage. And I think uh, we have to beat him, but uh, you know, we give him a go. Bill? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the race and he shouldn't fancy. The, yeah, I mean, the favourite has been well backed, they'll say. It's seven to four opening tissue, five to four now. Yeah, I mean, safe voyage is the obvious one, particularly if there's rain around. I mean, the more rain, the better for him. Uh, never been to Epsom. I don't think Shine So Bright's been to Epsom either. Uh, so it's trappy, but uh, Silver will be very dangerous from the front if he's given a soft lead on Shine So Bright. I think he's probably got a very good chance of his an uncontested lead. But exactly like Silver says, the massive danger. Safe always bringing some Group One place form to the table looks the obvious one there. Right, let's move into the Avestic handicap. The three o'clock. You team up with Johnny Drama again, one of the best known horses in training, Silv. Um he was very keen at Ascot, wasn't he? He pulled yeah. pulled his way to the front nearly, but a mile two now, not a mile four, a bit of juice in the ground. This looks a more attainable race, I would have thought. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's it's not a big field and you know, and I think I think he, he got every chance out there. He's just he, he lost his way a bit, this horse, you know, but uh, I thought was a competitive, last time was a competitive race in Ascot and looks, the race now is a bit more in his class, you know, so, and, you know, it's more field, it's not a big field, I think he, he's only 15, 16 in, so, you know, and I, I give him a chance, I give him a each way chance, you know, if he hit his form back, he shouldn't be far away. Yes, there we go. We've got 10 to 1 with Star Sports at the moment. Johnny Drama, take that, EJ. Bill? Yeah, no, I was just saying, Silver, he's got a tongue tie on for the first time. Um, Johnny yes. Um, yeah, he got, to, you know, and uh, he's a big horse, you know, and, you know, I, 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 I didn't think he, you know, and he, he, never done, he never put a foot wrong with me, but obviously, Andrew, you know, might to put a tongue tie just to change his mind, you know, make him concentrate a bit more, I guess. Yeah. 
No, might put a tongue tie on myself then if it makes you concentrate a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, have you ever worn a tongue tie? No, it might shut you up a bit, Luke. It'd be perfect. There we go. There he is. <laughs> I might you one for Christmas. No, I can say I, I like two at the bottom there. I, I think um, there's a horse here called Mr. Scaramanga, a 20 to 1 shot down the bottom, trained by Simon Dow. Um, got great form around Epsom, was third in this race last year. Uh, been kept fit on the all weather, had a pipe open the last time. I thought he was just a big price with a small weight down the bottom. Um, he's around 20s. And another one that I think is even bigger, Breath Court of Rafe Beckett's. First run for Rafe Beckett was with David Simcott, uh, was at Newbury last week. And he kind of caught the eye, got a bit tired late on. I think he's well handicapped. He's, he, he runs off mark of 87. He seems like, he looks like a better horse than that. I thought him around the 20 to 1 mark. I, I take those two big prices um, against the field. Yeah, the two money horses on the early shows are Breath Court and also plenty of money for Your Hired, who's a 12 to 1 shot in the short as 9 now. But right, let's get on to the 340, the Oaks. And this is what is, well, what a showdown. Love versus Frankly Darling. The Thousand Guineas winner versus the Ribblesdale winner. O'Brien versus Gosden. Moore versus the Tory. 11 to 10, 2 to 1. Bill, you've got a free bet. You, Frank, uh, Sylv, you can ride whichever one you want. Who are you two siding with? Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a close call, you know. Uh, that's why I'm asking you, Sylv. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very close call. And, you know, you know, obviously you've got the English winner, the, 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 the 1,000 guineas, and you've got Frank Darling. And uh, I think we'll be racing between them two. You know, I... I I would not even tempt to look for anything else. Like, you know, I, I'll pick up off the off the heart. Uh, anyone that one, any any one of them two fillies will be lovely ride in the day, you know. But I still think love would take the best of, you know. I've got of, a of feeling, Bill. I, I, I'll go for love, you know. I've got a feeling, Bill. After you were waxing lyrical about Frankly Darling before she won at Royal Ascot, you'll be sticking with her. Yeah, yeah, I will. I, I, I... They also say love conquers all. I'm not sure she will tomorrow. I I, I worry about love stamina. Um, you know, there were question marks whether she'd stay the Guineas trip because she didn't look to stay a mile at two. But she ran all the way to line, won the Guineas by a long way. But it's weird to say it, but she almost won it by too much for me. She looks like a speed filly. Frankly, darling, bolted up at Newcastle, was brilliant at Royal Ascot. I just think she's the value. I, I, I couldn't believe... Um, there is so such a big kind of discre discrepancy in price between them. You know, love skirting around even money, frankly, darling around two to one. I'd far rather be with frankly, darling. Um, and if I don't think love's going to stay, I think Estemon, Enistemon comes into it. The other way with Brian Philly. Um, and I actually tipped up the pair of them in a forecast, frankly, darling and Enistemon, because I think there's a chance the love might not stay. So I would go frankly, darling. I was going to call you old romantic, but I won't do if you're going to try and get love out of the frame at even money. I mean, from a bookmaker's point of view, let's very much hope you're right, because I think there'll be plenty of money for love in the Oaks. I will skip past the 415. Just to let you know, there's been plenty of money for love and thunder. Frankie de Tori's riding one at Newbury. But we'll get into the 455, which is the Investec Derby. Having the Oaks and Derby run within an hour and 15 minutes of each other, it doesn't come much for a box office than that. And a great renewal. English King is our strong three to one favourite, who was particularly impressive at Lingfield when he beat Berkshire Rocco, who's then subsequently come second to Santiago. Kenneco, who's my idea of the winner, was a you know smart winner of our guineas. Mogul, who's been all the rage in the last 48 hours, is a nine to two chance. Ryan Moore's chosen him, but he was desperately disappointing in the King Edward. Russian Emperor won the Hampton Court. I could go on and on. I think Pile Driver. Brilliant winner at Ascot, 16 to 1 chance, looks big to me. Zilv, you could pick up a spare. Who'd you ride? Uh, Vatican City, I think, was. Really? Uh, really? Yeah, I, I think he has a very good run in last time, but it would be hard to me to beat uh, Ed Walker's horse, English King. You know, I think, uh, you know, he, he looks like a really classy horse when he won the. the, the in, when he won at Linfield, yeah. the Derby trial. And uh, Kamiko's there, you know, he's a Guinness winner. I have a bit of doubt if he stays or not. Really? Okay. Yeah. I, I might have to go cashing out a few bets then. Yeah, just, just, <laughs> on, just, on, just on that, Sil. Um, yeah. There's a lot of publicity about English King's draw being, stall one, being a nightmare draw. 
you know, do, do you want to just tell people why that is a nightmare draw, why that's a bad draw for him? And uh, it could be a nightmare for an uh, unexperienced jockey, like you know, he was having his first ride in the derby. But yeah. I have, you know, Frankie might be all right everyone though. has to Frankie come. Frankie might. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Frankie. Frankie is the main man around that. So, you know, he knows every step around the track, and uh, you know, he's not his first rider there. Mm. You know, and uh, you know, I think he's going to grab that race. You know, like he's his own race. So, but I'll be quite happy if I had a ride in the race, and if I would be, be draw one and a good horse like him. You just have to jump out, push the old ones wide, and save your posy. <laughs> you you, God gave you elbows, use them. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. get the elbows out a bit. But no, I. Well, obviously, if, if you're bang in the middle, like you know, he is a better because you could judge the race. But draw one is no excuse. Me, no, you could be sit one off the fence, no problem. Uh, Bill, who you gonna headline? Yeah, well, uh, I headline Vatican City. Um, Vatican City were for me the. Market told you he wasn't ready for the Irish Guineas. You know, he was a big drifter on the day and he ran an unbelievable race to finish second. Question mark with him is whether he stays. A bit like Cameco, they're the two class horses in the race. If either of those stays, they, they're going to be the likely winner. Um, I just went back to Vatican City on, on, on the value grounds. I mean, he's by Galileo, so most of the Galileo stay. But if you look at the dams, you've got to question the stamina. But Vatican City, for me, around the 10 to 1 chance was looked a great each way bet. I'm also going to put one up at a really, really big price, which is a horse called Serpentine. It's trained by Aidan O'Brien. It's ridden by Emmett McNamara. Now, this horse really reminds me of a horse they won the derby with called Ruler of the World because yeah. Chief Pieces brought about something really different with Serpentine last week. He bolted up at the Curra. Admittedly, it was, a, it was a mile and a quarter maiden, but he bolted up. There isn't a better horse bred for the race than him. This is a horse by Galileo out of a Oaks runner-up. Uh, remember when it was called. An Oaks runner-up. He's bred brilliantly and he's going to be the pace element of the race. He'll be out front, soft lead. I just wonder whether the jockeys will turn for home thinking, give, giving up Emmett McNamara the rope because he's going supposedly too quick. And I just think there's a chance this might get loose on the lead and be really hard to peg back. So I would say Serpentine, Vatican City, for me. Those would be the one to... Aiden's had a history of big price places in this. Yeah, big price well, places. I, I think Serpent, Serpentine is going to surprise a few at a big price. Anyway, moving past the Investec derby, who cares about that when you've got a 10 to 1 chance, which is top weight in the last hill, the Investec Zebra handicap. Straight right, who travelled well for a long way at Royal Ascot, just petering out slightly, finishing midfield in the Buckingham Palace. Uh, I thought I thought ten to one looked fair to be honest. If he handles the track, and you'd have every chance. Yeah, I, I think it's quite a fair number for him. You know, he, he's not a favourite, but he's there in the mix and the betting. You know, and you know, top weight obviously has come down to his grading. And you know, he's a horse. He needs a good gallop. If they're going a good gallop, he'll come through them. And he's a sharp. He's a sharp seven out there. Like you know, he's almost six full on, and you know. Uh, I'll give it. I'll give his chances, and you know, I hope. You know, I'd say he's gonna be there in each way. You know, I wouldn't swap the ride. You know, for anything else. Good, but Bill, there's been money for um, Hatea, Jim Boyle's charge in the last about nine into seven already. Is that you? Is that you? Yeah, well, I've tipped up two horses in the paper this morning. Hatea, one of them, second in the race last year. Drop back uh, in the handicap, has had two quick runs. This has obviously been the plan. Uh, he's a big player. And I've also tipped Sill, straight right. Um, this is a horse, he's, he's top weight, but he's top weight for a reason. And the top weight is a mark of 95. Now, this horse was rated 107, 108 a year ago. He's 10 pounds better than that now in the weights. I, I just think he's a very, very classy horse. And Sill touched on it. The faster they go, the more it'll string them out. They go too quick in this race historically. And if he can lay up with them and just travel and cut his way through, I think he's, an, he's a real player and he's the class, class horse in the race. Perfect. Right, to conclude Saturday then, I'm going to stick with Chemico in the, um, in the derby and I'll be with Frankly Darling in the Oaks. Bill, you'll be with Frankly Darling in the Oaks. Sylv, you're with Love in the Oaks. And Sylv, your yep. one pick in the derby was Vatican City, wasn't it? Yes. 
That's brilliant. Thanks so much, guys. A brilliant day's racing Saturday. Get online, get to starsportsbet.bet. And like I said, if you do want to phone up, it's 08000 521 321.